The Ender 3 V3KE is the fastest Ender series printer that Creality has ever come out with. With speeds up to 500 millimeters per second, thanks to its dual linear rail system for the Y axis, as well as the addition of a linear rail for the X axis as well. This printer also showcases super easy hands-off leveling with the CR Touch system that they introduced with the Neo and S1 series not too long ago. There's also the option of high precision calibration with the ADXL345 vibration compensation sensor, which calculates the input shaping of your printer, then you uses the data to mitigate the vibrations of the printer, which reduces the amount of ghosting and ringing. It also uses another smart algorithm system, which optimizes the feed and flow rates of your extruder, therefore reducing blobbing and oozing. This printer also allows you to print with a wide variety of filaments due to its hardened being able to reach up to 300 degrees Celsius. It also allows for various control systems like printing over your LAN network, wirelessly connecting through the Creality Cloud app, or by manually uploading the files to your printer by using the USB stick that is provided. Along with the vibration compensation sensor, this printer is also compatible with the Nebula camera so that you can take high definition time lapses of your prints through the day and even through the night. Today we'll be doing the unboxing and setup of the the printer as well as throwing a few interesting printing challenges toward it to see how great of a printer it really is. So stay tuned for high speed, high quality print. So here we have the box for the Ender 3 V3KE. I'll quickly just be taking you through the unboxing and then assembly of it as well. Luckily, Creality has been on a hot streak with making assembling the printers they bring out super easy. Once again, using my scraper, perfect for cleaning dirty beds and opening boxes. First thing we're greeted with is a very thin black layer of foam on the top and then the rest is just the wonderful disassembled printer staring us in the face waiting to be assembled. We got our ghetto plug, our screen mount, Oh, it's our completely our screen, not even just the screen mount. It is compatible with Nebula products like the calibration compensator that I mentioned, as well as the Nebula camera. Then we have our runout sensor and our filament spool mount. Little bags of goodies and thingies, like our Allen keys, screwdrivers and screws, as well as our USB instruction manual and nozzle cleaner. Last but not least, the bed and base. Let's do a little bit of a zoom in here so that you can see the dual linear rail system for the z-axis to ensure that the bed can move really fast but also really smooth as well as a linear rail for the x-axis as well. Then we move on to the assembly procedure. First thing that I noticed is there is a cable that runs through the profile here. Just be mindful when uh, you put this on to slide this JST connection through first before dropping down the gantry, like so. Otherwise you might end up hurting that cable and that could cause problems with your filament sensor. There's a little connection which can connect to the bottom of it. Once you have slotted the gantry into the printer, what you can do is just tilt it to the side, making sure that you do it carefully so that nothing starts shaking violently. And you'll see three holes at the top as well as three holes at the bottom. You'll be using the M3x14 screws that have been supplied by Creality to fix the gantry to the bottom plate. Be sure to add all six of them, three on both sides, before tightening the screws all the way, just to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Once all six have been added, you can now tighten them all the way to make sure that the gantry is nice and secure. Once you're confident that they all have been secured properly, you can flip the printer back over and secure the plate on the top. Last thing you have to do to completely secure the gantry to the base plate is by using the two M3x8 screws supplied to finally screw this down. As I've stated before, the screen is new to the end of line, having two USB connections on the side here, one for the Nebula camera and one for your USB as well. All you have to do is to line up the three holes on the little triangle bracket on the screen with the holes on the base plate. Then screw it in with the three M4 by 10 screws provided. Once the three screws are in and you can feel that the screen is mounted securely, all you have to do then, plug in the cable at the back. The final step for the assembly is to add the bracket to the top, uh, which holds the filament spool and the runout sensor. Do the half turn to secure it in place. Now all that's left is the wiring and then we can start it up. Now that the printer has completely been assembled and all the wiring has been done, all that we need to do is plug it in and see our first boot. 
There we go, you can see the CR Touch is going as well and the screen is turning on too. So now that the printer has started up, all we need to do is choose our language, which will be English, set up our Wi-Fi, then you choose your time. Well now I'm not going to bind the Creality app, so I'm just gonna skip this step. And go now the printer will be performing its own self test so what you do is just hit start detection and the printer will then go through and check everything see if all of the accesses move properly the nozzle heats up properly and the bed heats up properly etc etc seems like it is extruding some filaments i guess that is in the nozzle when they pack it up you can see it at the bottom there So that was just to check the offset. Now it's going to do its automatic leveling. As you can do, see there, it is going to be a 25 point automatic leveling system. There you go. Now we just say okay, and voila, we are in and it is ready to go. As you can see, we have a little graph depicting our bed temperature and our nozzle temperature as well. Um, also, the actual numbers of those temperatures at the top too. Here is a quick activation of the fans so that you can start the cool down process. If we go on to our next tab, here we can see our movement and temperature settings, our extrude and retract settings, as well as our adjustment settings. If we then click on the folder at the bottom, here we can see where our files are stored. So there is a local storage, it seems as well as a USB drive, and then your print history as well. See here you can also sort it by date, size, and name, which is also a new feature that I haven't seen yet. And we move on to the cogwheel, which is our setting. So here we have our system, where you can set your screen brightness, you can also set your screen display timer, reselect your language, turn the sound on or off, you can run your filament self-test once again, or sorry, your equipment self-test once again. The vibration optimizer, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is needed for this optimization of vibration veins. So as you see currently, if we click on it, it can't do anything with that. You can change your um, times and settings and you can also bind your Creality Cloud app from here. Again, under the Bind the Creality Cloud app as well, there is a version detector. Next one over is your network settings once again. And then lastly, your camera. This is where your time lapses will be stored, as well as you can set your camera settings to optimize your time lapse uh, in any way that you want. Well, in any way, by two, <laughs> changing two options. Then we have our AI detection. To turn these on, you also need the camera, I'm pretty sure. Let me just check here. Yeah, no camera detected. Basically, they'll just detect if there's anything wrong with your print as it's printing or just before your print starts and then pause your print or to let you know that it, uh, there's something not correct there. Finally, we have our help and log to get the printing process on the road. We're using the USB drive that is included with the printer and then looking at the print that was uploaded. Here we can see we have boat, <laughs> which is the Benchy. So let us add some filament and then we can run that print. The filament that we will be using on this print is some Red PLA Plus from Wanhao. Let me get this up and ready and see how the print does. So also like for my nose shot. Yeah, that's actually super nice. I think that's super nice, yeah. So there we go, after just around 17 minutes, it has completed its first print, its first Benchy. Oh, I, wanted to, I was gonna <laughs> flex it off the ball plate, but I just came off on its own. This is our first print on the Ender 3B3KE. There we go, you can see the layer lines are really well done. There's a tiny, with literally one string in between the hole there. Don't, this, don't see one on the other side as well. And there's a little bit of wobbling, but I think the wobbling is perfectly fine considering the speeds at which this was printed. But now for the test that I know the majority of you are more interested in is 
how does it do with our own custom slices? To slice for the Ender 3B3KE, we will be using Creality Print. It is Creality's own slicing software for the more new generation printers that have come out, so like the K1, K1 Max, and the SENKE. To download Creality Print, you can go to the Creality website and go to any of their printers, really, and scroll down to the Creality Print FDM slicer. You can choose to download for Windows, Mac or Linux. Make sure that you have the latest slicer downloaded. Once you have that done, the first thing we have to do before slicing for the KE is make sure that we have it selected as our printer. So we're going to go over to the right hand side and select Add. Then we go over to the Ender series and choose the Ender 3 V3 KE. We then just have to add that printer and choose the nozzle diameter that we have for our printer. Currently the standard one is a 0.4mm nozzle so we just have to hit OK. The first thing we're going to be printing on the in the 3B3KE is a all-in-one printing stress test. We're going to see how the KE handles uh, printing at higher speeds and how well it can do with stuff like overhang, stringing, uh, etc. First thing we're going to do is go and check if our normal settings are fine. So the quality is at 0 0.2, shell is good, in full 15% um, percent speed, 300 millimeters per second, which is the recommended speed for the printer, no supports. The material is going to be at 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, just change that. Then our bed temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. That's perfect. Cooling is on. It will generate an auto brim for uh, the adhesion. I think I'm just going to turn that off for now. I don't think this uh, stress test needs anything. Then you just have to hit save to save that profile there. So then to send your print to your printer, there is one of three ways you can do it. Either through your LAN network at your home, if you have a LAN cable plugged into the printer, or you can send it wirelessly via the Creality Cloud app on your PC or on your phone or by just using the USB as I am going to do now. Then we just hit slice, it will generate the G-code so we just have to wait for it to finish up. Once it is finished you can choose your different export settings so I will say export to local. Then we just rename it stress test. Make sure to eject your USB and just don't just plug it out because it could corrupt files. Two hours later. So this is the result of our filament stress test, our all-in-one test. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad at all. There's a little bit of fuzziness on the top layer. I do believe this is due to the filament though. Uh, that filament has been sitting out for a while, so it could be a little bit wet. As you can see, the verticals prints it really nicely as well. Um, as well as the overhangs that got to 80 degrees overhang here. That was basically the first spot where you could kind of see the bridging failing or starting to struggle. It still came out looking perfectly fine. I'm very impressed with this test, so we can move on to printing something a little bit more fun. Many hours later. So as you can see, our 12 hour print of the Articulating Dragon did finish overnight. We also used the Nebula camera that I mentioned earlier uh, to take a time lapse footage. So I will be showing you guys that as well. The majority of it is going to be in night vision mode, but I think it still should look really cool. So let's, uh, let's see how this went. At least you can just easily pop it off with the spring steel bed plate. So now you can have a look. Oh, stick. Did you look at that. That's actually really cool. It's working so well. A lot of the times with these ones, you can print them and they just kind of don't work. Like they don't articulate like you want them to. So it's really cool to see that it is actually articulating properly. So to view your time lapse, you first need to upload it to a USB drive. So you just have to take either the USB drive included or just your one of your own. This is just an SD card extender thingy that we got. And then head over to your settings, to the cogwheel at the bottom. Then you hit on camera, which is already assist, um, selected, but go over to the third option, go to camera, then go to video list. Here you'll see your video of the print. Uh, the video length is 13 hours and 55 minutes. That is how long it took for this print to finish. So all we have to do then is then export it. So now all we have to do is remove our SD card and then head over to our computer and watch the video.
As you can see, the time-lapse video of uh, this guy printing is a little bit sporadic. <laughs> so there are two options that I showcased before that um, for the video recording or for the time-lapse recording. It's the one that just uh, takes an image at the end of a layer and then there's another one for the head to move out of the way before it takes the image. So I want to see, I'm going to print something smaller. I'm maybe just going to print that Benchy once again um, and then see if I select that option, what happens? Is there anything different that happens? And it's also a shorter print, so we should be able to see it in a daylight time lapse instead of a night vision one. So there we go, our new more colorful Benchy has now finished printing. All we have to do is the same process of just adding our USB to the printer so that we can export the time-lapse. You can see it there on the top of the video list. Uh, and then we just export. So I just want to slice something custom as well. It's the final thing I want to try and see if the G-code gets overwritten by the printer to move the head out of the way for each time-lapse frame. Have a look at the time-lapse footage of this Benchy and then I'll be back with the results of that. And there you have it. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the Ender 3 V3KE. This video was very introductive and just kind of going through your first setup and first impressions basically on this machine. I was really impressed by the time-lapse footage. <laughs> when I saw the Dragon's time-lapse, I was a little bit disappointed, but then I just realized, well, that was my mistake. <laughs> I shouldn't have chosen the setting for the start of each layer, but you actually have to choose the setting for moving the head out of the way because it actually does override the G-code. Yes, it does make the print a little longer, but it looks really, really good. I would say it's absolutely well worth the extra printing times just to get that cool time-lapse. The other thing that I was really impressed by is how detailed these prints still came out even at those high speeds without the use of the vibration compensation sensor. With the inclusion of that I think you should be able to push your quality even higher than what we currently saw today. If you guys have any questions regarding this printer or regarding any other printer that you might have seen before or might have some questions about feel free to ask them in the comment section and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like leave a comment and maybe consider subscribing. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.